Championed by a law professor named Philip Johnson, intelligent design began to emerge in the 1980s. This whole Darwinian story, it seems to me, has been very much oversold. Everybody is told that it's absolutely certain and certainly true, and because it's called science, it has been proved again and again by absolutely unquestionable procedures. But this is not true. It's an imaginative story that has been spun on the basis of very little evidence. An emeritus professor at the UC Berkeley Law School, Johnson wrote a book called Darwin on Trial, in which he laid the groundwork for the intelligent design movement. For years, he's been making the claim that evolution may produce small-scale changes, like the different finch beaks Darwin observed. But for humans to come about requires the intervention of some kind of intelligence. That is the basic intelligent design proposition, that the unintelligent causes by themselves can't do the whole job. An intelligent cause had to be involved. Armed with this new information on intelligent design, Bill Buckingham returned to the school board. He had been told that intelligent design was a good compromise between his religious beliefs, is what he told me, and Alan Bonsall told me that too, um, and what the courts will allow. They were both very clear on that, that this is their compromise. Even though they believe in creationism, this would, this would sort of bridge the gap for them. But the science teachers were not convinced. The first reading of it, an intelligent agent created life. It's creationism. It's, it's biblical creationism, you know? All I have to do is take out intelligent agent and put in God, and voila, we have the story of Genesis. So there's no question in my mind what intelligent design was. Now Buckingham was ready to take a stand. He came up with the ultimatum that the only way that they would vote for the textbooks was that we adopted the Book of Panas and People as a sister or companion textbook. But when he put it before the school board, he came up two votes short. The board chose to purchase only the standard biology book, co-authored by Ken Miller. Pandas was shelved. That might have been the end of the story. But a few weeks later, 60 copies of Pandas turned up in Bertha Spar's department, a gift to the school from an anonymous donor. Then. Without consulting the teachers, members of Buckingham's curriculum committee drafted the outlines of what became a bold new policy for the science department. It was brought before the full school board for a vote, and after a heated debate, it passed six to three. In its final form, the policy mandated that all students in ninth grade biology be read a one-minute statement telling them that Darwin's theory is not a fact and that it contains gaps. Suggesting intelligent design as an alternative, it directed students to the 60 copies of pandas that would be available as a reference. The school board members who voted against Buckingham's proposal resigned in protest. Tammy Kitzmiller is the mother of a ninth grade student who would be read the one-minute statement at Dover High School. She called the ACLU to see what could be done. I just didn't agree with what they were doing. I did not like how they were trying to mix religion and science. We had parents, we had students, we had teachers um, all calling us and saying, hey, there's a problem here, can you help us? And uh, we said, sure, we'll help you. On December 14th, 2004, 11 parents of Dover school students, including Tammy Kitzmiller and Brian and Christy Rehm, filed a lawsuit in federal court in Pennsylvania, alleging the Dover school board was violating their constitutional rights by introducing religion into science class. They would be represented by the ACLU, which had joined forces with the organization Americans United for Separation of Church and State, and Philadelphia law firm Pepper Hamilton. Eric said at the time, this is the case I've been waiting for my entire <laughs> career. The school board would be represented by the Thomas More Law Center, the firm that had told Bill Buckingham about the Pandas book. A court date was set, and as depositions were being taken, the science teachers took a stand of their own 
against reading the intelligent design statement. We stepped up and said, we're not going to read it. We met together and agreed that as a unit, we would stand together. I mean, I have principles and standards of my own, and there was no way that I was going to go into a science classroom of mine and make a statement about this so-called intelligent design, knowing full well that it was not science. They notified the board of their refusal in a memo that proclaimed, intelligent design is not science. Intelligent design is not biology. Intelligent design is not an accepted scientific theory. With the teachers refusing to read the one-minute statement, Dover's assistant superintendent walked into ninth grade biology class on January 18, 2005 and read, The Pennsylvania academic standards require students to learn about Darwin's theory of evolution and eventually to take a standardized test of which evolution is a part. Because Darwin's theory is a theory, it continues to be tested as new evidence is discovered. The theory is not a fact. Gaps in the theory exist for which there is no evidence. A theory is On September 26, 2005, almost exactly a year after the school board passed the intelligent design policy, six weeks of testimony in the case of Kitzmiller versus Dover Area School District got underway in federal court in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Good morning to all of you. Are you prepared to open? Yes, I am. You may do so. My co-counsel and I represent 11 parents who are challenging the Dover Area District School Board's change to its biology curriculum. Dover School Board members announced their interest in the topic of evolution in starkly religious terms. They look for a book that could provide a religious alternative to evolution. And they found one here in Of Pandas and People. They did everything you would do if you wanted to incorporate a religious topic in a science class and cared nothing about its scientific validity. Patrick Gillen, Your Honor, on behalf of the defendants in this action, the Dover Area School District and its board of directors. The board believed that intelligent design was not creationism. They knew what that was, the book of Genesis. They believed it was a legitimate educational goal to make the students aware of the existence of another scientific theory. Defendants experts will show this court that intelligent design theory is science. It is not religion. This expert testimony will also demonstrate that making students aware of gaps and problems in evolutionary theory is good science education. It's good liberal education. By the time the trial started, challenges to the teaching of evolution had cropped up in dozens of other states, and intelligent design was attracting some heavy hitters. Rick Santorum, then Pennsylvania senator, had commended the school district for its intelligent design policy. And President Bush had thrown his support behind intelligent design, saying both sides ought to be properly taught so people can understand what the debate is about. Now, the eyes of the nation were on Dover, the latest battleground in the war on evolution. Now, I want to sound melodramatic, but I actually think very important things were at stake. One is uh, the future of science education in this country. If a school board could do this, what, what would prevent them from uh, doing more things like this in other classes, presenting pseudoscience or pseudo-math or pseudo-history in, in promotion of one particular religious view? It's wrong. Does science education have to be so narrow? so technical, so deferential to the existing paradigm that we can't even introduce students to what may be the next great theory. Presiding over the case would be Judge John E. Jones III. I could never have imagined in August of 2002 when I took my seat that I would be presiding over a case that would attract literally worldwide 
attention. Jones had been recommended for his position on the bench by Senator Santorum and appointed by George W. Bush. Before becoming a judge, Jones was head of Pennsylvania's Liquor Control Board, where he banned the sale of bad frog beer because it showed a cartoon frog making an offensive gesture. Initially, you find out you've got a judge that's been appointed by President Bush, who has come out himself in favor of intelligent design. That makes you a little nervous. Members of the defense, however, were optimistic about their chances in Jones's courtroom. What the Dover School Board had done, they weren't requiring that intelligent design be taught, and they weren't removing evolution from the classroom. So it seemed to me this was pretty modest, and so I did think it had a pretty good chance, if it was printed properly, of, of being accepted. We didn't have to show that, you know, one theory was better than the other, merely that it was a credible theory, and that the students would gain something by understanding the controversy uh, surrounding uh, the theory of evolution and the origin of species. The parents who opposed intelligent design, or plaintiffs, had launched the lawsuit, so the burden of proof was on them. And because the parents were asking for the teaching of intelligent design to be halted, an order that only a judge can render, there would be no jury. Instead, the jury box was packed with reporters and writers from around the globe, including one with a surprising connection to the case. I think of myself as being a sort of living disproof of evolution, because my great-great-grandfather was Charles Darwin, who was obviously, you know, one of, wrote one of the most important books of the last 2,000 years, and I'm a screenwriter. This is not evolution, you know, <laughs> in the right direction. To win, the plaintiff's lawyers would have to show the judge that the Dover School Board's one-minute statement promoted religion or that board members had religious motivation. In addition, both sides asked the judge to rule on a fundamental question. Is intelligent design science or not? In order to show that intelligent design is not science, we had to talk about, well, what is science? For help, the plaintiffs turned to researcher Nick Motsky and his colleagues at an organization called the National Center for Science Education, which tracks challenges to evolution in public schools. The last time any lawyer took biology was probably in ninth grade, and I spent months and months on email, at meetings, um, explaining science, explaining evolution to the lawyers. To make their case before a judge who had no particular scientific training, the lawyers for the parents assembled a team of expert witnesses. And as their first witness, they called biologist Ken Miller, co-author of the textbook that Bill Buckingham had called Laced with Darwinism.